Hi, my name is Dwij. I'm studying veterinary medicine at the University of Forestry in Sofia. And today I'd like to tell you a little bit more about my course. I'm in my first year. And before I begin explaining anything about the course, I'd like to first talk about how I applied to study for veterinary medicine. So I had to give an entrance exam, which I found out about through Interhex. And for that, I had to prepare for biology and English. No chemistry, no physics, not like the medical students. Just biology and English, and it's your 11th and 12th or high school qualifications that help you uh, apply and be accepted for veterinary medicine. I gave the entrance exam and it has 10 questions in English and I think another 30 questions in biology. If I'm not mistaken, it's either 30 or 40 questions. Um, they're all multiple choice questions, really easy. For English, they will give you a passage and then they will ask you questions about the things you read in that passage. The exam should be for about an about three hours but usually you get done before time. So before I begin um, explaining the course and the subjects we have I'd like to describe our campus which is three buildings located in three separate places. It's a little more complicated because the buildings are far apart located all over Sofia but you usually you're able to use a bus one specific bus the 280 bus and you can get to all the buildings so it's no problem. We have one building for anatomy cytology and another building for our basic language courses like Bulgarian and Latin, which happens twice a week. This building, it's known as the ELC, it's the main building, it's also where you will be giving your entrance exam. You will use this building mostly in your first and second year and use it less in the third, fourth and fifth year. The anatomy building, I call it the anatomy building, but um, it's a small building where you will have most of your courses, let's say, from your first year, but most of your courses in the third, fourth and fifth year will take place here. There is a third building and it's located farther away than the first two buildings. It's where you have cytology, histology and most of your lectures. This building is located about an hour away, but you can, you can take a bus and it's not that difficult. And you go there once or twice a week maximum, but I'm not sure in the future it might increase. The ELC building is the one that will reduce most of all. I think it's important for me to mention that the entire course for the length of five and a half years is completely in English. The only time you'll probably need Bulgarian specifically is when you're interacting with in clinics with owners of pets. Uh, and by then, hopefully you will have a good grasp over Bulgarian because you studied it for two years prior to starting work in clinics. So, um, when you talk about a language barrier here, I don't think it's too difficult because most of the youngsters here speak English and the Bulgarian students at the university who do the same course but in Bulgarian are really friendly and are open to talking to you and discussing things and helping you out. So you don't need to worry about a language barrier per se. There's also a lot of students within your group itself, within the international community that are always ready to hang out and are willing to meet new people. So each student is given a student book. This one is mine. Uh, you have your grades written in here and this book is really important for the next five years of your education so you're not allowed to lose it. Uh, your teachers will sign it at the, at the end of a semester. They will also sign it again once you give your exam and pass your exam. Uh, you're supposed to keep this book with you because you need it for graduation as well. And it'll have all your grades in there, all your attendance, all your results. Now regarding our subjects, we have about six to seven subjects each semester. It's the number of subjects is supposed to reduce each year, but your workload will increase because each subject gets more complicated. In our first year, the way the subjects go is we have our lectures and we have our practicals. Our lectures are not compulsory for attendance. You can attend 70% of the lectures and still pass your semester, but your practicals are very important you have to attend all of them. You are allowed to miss just one, but no more. And if you miss any of them, you may not be able to give your exam at the end of the semester. In the first year, you have two really important subjects, which is anatomy and cytology or histology. And for these subjects, you have certain textbook PDFs, which are given to you by either the professors or the students from the higher years. And through these PDFs, you will be able to study most of what you require for the exam. You don't require anything extra to pass the exam. In cytology, you will be studying cells and tissue. Tissue will be part of histology, which comes in the second semester. And for this exam, at the end, you will have to be able to recognize certain parts of organs on, under a microscope. 
and if you are able to pass that part of the exam you will then give a theoretical exam and once you pass both of those you are able to pass the whole subject of histology at the end of the second semester. Throughout the second semester in histology you will be giving weekly tests of each subject that you study and these tests are of nine points each and they're basic tests as long as you pay attention and revise you will be able to pass each of these tests. It's really important to pass each of these tests because they, the final score of all of them together will also add to your final grade. In anatomy you have practical exams every semester for three semesters and you have your final anatomy exam at the end of the third semester. Uh, for each practical, practical exam, we have a specific syllabus. For our first practical exam, we studied bones. So you will be handling bones, learning the names of the parts of the bones, and then you will give an exam with the professor. In the second semester, you will be doing the same, but this time it will be muscles. And in the third semester, you will be studying organs. These practical exams are really important because if you manage to get an excellent, which is a 50 and or above out of 60, then you are exempted from giving this exam again in your final anatomy examination. So all you have to do is manage to pass each practical exam at the right time. And that way, your final load will completely reduce because you already have those 30 points from the earlier exams. Usually for each subject, the professors will let you know which books they expect you to study from and in most cases the professors will give you copies of the book or PDFs for you to print out the textbook for yourself. So in the first year we study a lot of the things you already did in high school such as medical chemistry and biophysics. It's basic and it's just so that you ha you're able to revise everything before you move ahead to harder topics. The professors are really helpful. They um, answer all your questions, they're always available and if you have any doubts in the future they're always there. During your exam as well they're ready to help you, they discuss your paper with you so that if you have any issues you can always solve it right there. So everything is flexible and easy to manage, so you don't have to worry about anything. In chemistry and physics we have our practical exam which again takes place at the end of the semester, the first semester. And the exam is simple, you have to learn the syllabus given to you and you'll be given six questions that you have to answer in length. Beyond that, the professors will discuss your paper with you once you are done with it and based on both of those scores, you will be given your final score. For physics and for chemistry, you do not have a textbook specifically to study from. It would be helpful if you bring your high school physics and chemistry textbook with you. It's helpful at some points. The notes you get from your chemistry professor will be really helpful. It's usually all you need to pass the exam. For physics, um, the notes you get again are good enough. They will be shared with you by the professor or by students of your course. You don't really need anything, but if you want to revise further, you can revise from your high school textbooks. We have two language subjects, Bulgarian and Latin. For Latin, it's usually just pharmaceutical terms, anat anatomy terms, as well as clinical terms that you have to learn. The exam for Latin is given at the end of the first year, after the second semester. The exam for Bulgarian will be given after four semesters at the end of the second year. Bulgarian Language has the largest number of credits, so it's really important that you don't miss any classes and that you attend it even if you don't feel like it because it seems unnecessary at the start. Also, in the fourth year and fifth year, you will ha be having clinical practices and for that you will definitely need a basic grasp of Bulgarian to be able to discuss with the owners of the patients that you will be handling and dealing with. In Latin specifically, in the first semester, things are a little easier. You will be having weekly tests of grammar sometimes and um, dictation most of the time. Uh, in the second semester, things get a little more complicated. You will have weekly tests, again, dictation, but also grammar of a higher level. At the end of the second semester, you will give the Latin exam during your class itself. There's no special date to give the exam. And I must say the Latin professor is quite strict about attendance, so it's better not to miss any of her classes. For Bulgarian, I have not yet seen the format of the exam, so I'm not exactly sure. But usually it's basic conversation. You have to be able to manage a basic conversation uh, and you have to be able to manage some written sentences here and there. So we have two subjects in the first semester as well, which are ecology and biostatistics. And both of these subjects are just for one semester. You give an exam at the end of the semester. They both have practical classes as well as lectures. Like I said earlier, lectures are not 
um, necessary to attend like the whole of them but for the practices you have to attend each and every one of them so that you can pass your class. For biostatistics you will be giving an exam in front of a computer. You will have to solve a few sums using the equations given to you through the semester and with that you will get your final grade. For ecology, you will have a set of questions, which is your syllabus at the start of the semester, and you just need to be able to answer that set of questions in your exam. You will only be asked possibly two questions out of the full set, and if you're able to write it down properly, as well as explain it properly to the professor, then you're able to pass your exam in ecology as well. In the second semester, you have a subject known as medical botany in which you have to study a set of plants, about 110 or 120 plants, and be able to recognize these plants to be able to pass your exam. You will have a small project as well, which adds to your final grade, and you will also have uh, a theoretical part of the exam. Once you do all these three things, you can pass medical botany in your second semester. The other two subjects that you'll have in the second semester are molecular biology and zoology both of which. Zoology is similar to ecology from the first semester. You most probably have the same professor and that means you have a syllabus of questions and you'll have notes to be able to answer those questions and through those questions you'll be able to pass your exam. For molecular biology it's a little harder. You have notes again. You have to attend the lectures because she shows a lot of PPTs and a lot of explains a lot of things in detail and that way you know exactly what she might focus on in the exam and there are notes but there's no textbook specifically to study from so it's really important to pay attention and you should be able to pass your exam. Each year you have a set of elective courses usually one or two courses that you can choose to take or choose not to take. These courses give you extra credit and this credit is required for you to pass university. For all of the exams, it's actually really easy to find out your grade right after. The professors will let you know right after you're done with the exam what grade you get. They will write it in your student book that I showed you earlier. And uh, if you don't pass an exam, you have a chance to re-give it in the next few days on the other exam dates allocated to other students. Uh, if you need to carry forward an exam, there is, you can do that, but there's a limit to the number of exams you're allowed to carry forward, so be careful and prepare for each exam at the time you're given. The grading system is in points. It goes from two points up to six points, two being a fail and six being an excellent. Uh, three is a passing, so it's better to get at least a three in any of your subjects, and um, it's really good to get a five or a six because that will help you in your future as well in any subjects that you need to carry forward to the next semester. There's a lot of free time in your first year specifically as well as in your first semester. Uh, in your first semester usually you manage to get one day off in the week depending on how your schedule is set and through that you can explore Sofia, explore Studensky Grad which is where you will be located because most of the buildings are located in that area. There's a lot to do. There's an ice skating rink if you are interested in ice skating. There is a lot of parks that you can visit. There are uh, museums in the center and there's a lot of shopping to be done. There's a lot of restaurants that you can go to, especially in the center, and coffee shops that you can visit. In the first year, if you feel like you want to gain further experience, then you can always join a clinic or join some family member that you know. What I know is that my friends are usually, they go back home and they work, do work experience over the summer at farms and clinics that they are aware of. Some people go to different countries to get gain work experience, to work with specific animals, to work with specific wildlife. So you have all the opportunities available. I will be doing a summer internship here. And if you're looking for something, there's always a clinic available. There's no need to worry about not having experience beforehand because these clinics really help you and really explain things at a basic level to you so that you have no problems in the future. Before you get here, I'm sure you're wondering what you need to bring with you. Uh, most important to bring with you is a lab coat. In your second semester, it's important to bring gloves, a box of gloves. You can always buy that here, but usually the second semester begins after a break. So if you're back home during your break, it's really important to remember to bring home a box of gloves which will be used mostly for anatomy and sometimes in histology. Beyond that, I don't think there's anything extra you require. You can obviously bring your chemistry and physics books from high school to help you through your first semester. 
But in the future, after your first year, I do not think there's anything you'd need to bring with you as all your requirements will be right here in Bulgaria. If there's anything I can tell you to do to prepare yourself better for your year here in Sofia, it would be to make sure that you study everything at the time allocated. A lot of students leave certain exams to give them later on, maybe not in the first year, but to give them in the second year or the third year instead. And that is not very smart because I've been told that and I honestly believe it. The first year is the easiest year that you have. The third year in veterinary medicine is the hardest year you will have. In between those, you have a lot of exams to give for a lot of difficult subjects. So it's better to finish the easier subjects beforehand and not carry them forward and increase your workload at a difficult time. If you're worried about the breaks you get, there is a lot of breaks you get in between. For example, you get one for Christmas, then you get one in between the first and second semester, and you get another one for Easter. These breaks are usually 10 days long, so you have enough time to go back home. If you're coming from somewhere within the EU, it's really easy to go back home whenever you feel homesick, so you don't have to worry about being far away from home or missing family. Also, while you're here, I believe you'll be too busy keeping up with classes, keeping up with friends, having a social life to really worry too much about missing things back home. As long as you enjoy your experience here, I think you should be happy for the time that you are here. Also, I hope this video is very useful to anyone deciding to study in Bulgaria in the future. I hope you do choose Bulgaria because it's a lovely place to study and there's a lot to explore and a lot to experience. And if you have any questions or comments, please list them down below and I'm sure we will be able to help you.